Hello all, welcome back to another hiker mobile friendly workout. I am very, very excited to walk through this class with you today. Um, all you are going to need is a mini resistance band. And in fact, you don't even technically need it. You can do this entire class without any sort of band. Um, you're just gonna do it body weight. So the band that I am using is a kind of lightweight. However, my bands tends to be a little bit more on the tense side. Um, so it's kind of like a light to moderate resistance. Um, today we are gonna be focusing on creating deeper connections into the hips and pelvis. We're gonna focus on using that pelvic connection to create some slightly more functional movements. Um, functional movements meaning movements that are very valuable to us just on the day to day. So whenever you are ready, find yourself on uh, some space on the floor, on a mat, and we're gonna go ahead and dive right on in. So I'm going to grab my resistance band, pop it just above my knees, and from here, we're gonna start on our hands and knees. Now, at any point, if you get too much pressure on the wrists, too much pressure through the shoulders, you are welcome to grab some sort of box or futon that you have at home, even a coffee table, and just prop your forearms on a surface so that you don't have to put downward pressure. Today, my wrists and shoulders are actually feeling pretty solid for this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and find this nice hands and knees position. We're just gonna take a couple of deep breaths to start, big inhales through the nose. And exhale. And as you cycle through this, you're just trying to create a slightly deeper connection into the core. Inhale into the back of the ribs. Mm, that feels good. Exhale. Think about pulling your midline inward. Then any shifts or wiggles happen. I'm going to do a little shifting and wiggling because I'm feeling some tense spots in my mid back. I'm just kind of going to work it out a little bit. So once again, take a couple big inhales. And exhale. All right, guys. Now we are going to start gliding through a couple of different warm-up movements. So whenever you are ready, you can keep your toes tucked or let the tops of your feet go flat on the floor. Feel your knees connecting into the mat underneath you. As you inhale, you're gonna think about your tailbone tracking towards the heels of your feet. Now, I do not need you to sit all the way back here. I want you to go just as far as you can maintain the connection into your hips. I'm gonna start about here, and then you're gonna press forward from your legs, from your bum, redistribute the pressure into your arms a little bit, or the work, I should say, not pressure. And then let's go again. Sinking the tailbone back, and then gliding forward again, redistributing some weight into your hands as you come forward. And then back we go. Inhaling as you elongate back, maybe you build a little bit more range, but the goal here, guys, isn't to make this a huge movement. It's to stay connected in your bum, in your leg muscles, in the core, now, as you cycle through this, one cue I'm gonna use a lot today is think about keeping your thigh bones connected into your hip sockets. And don't worry too much about perfect posture here, guys. We're gonna go for like three more. Don't worry about if you're super over rounding or super coming back, just find what is like a nice, easy, neutral. Find what feels comfortable for you. I think I said three more, so let's go two more. <laughs> Queen, I'm losing count here. Nice and easy and slow. And now my hips, my legs, they have a little bit more heat. They have a little bit more engagement. And go ahead and relax. If you need to take a moment off the wrists, let's go ahead and do that. And just feel where your hips are sitting. Feel 
feel where that engagement is. Because we're going to come right back onto our hands and knees. Hands are going to go right underneath the shoulders. The knees just about right underneath the hips. Find a nice neutral position for your spine. The tailbone is shooting long. The back of the neck is long. Head is reaching away. And now we're going to start a little bit of movement against this resistance band. I want you to start to elongate one leg. Let your toe drag along the floor. Elongate as long as you can go. And then pull yourself right back in again. And you're going to alternate sides for me, guys. Elongate. And switch again. And as you cycle through this movement, you may feel your weight starts to kind of shift a little bit side to side. A little bit of shifting is cool, but with this exercise, we really want to try and keep your body as centered to the mat as is possible. You may feel a little bit of weight shift between each hand. Again, that's totally cool but make sure that we're not tipping over side to side to just make this movement look bigger. We wanna make sure we're staying active and engaged, even if the leg extension isn't all the way up, who cares? Now we're gonna try for a little bit of a build here, if you've got it, so let's go one more just to make sure we're staying even. You guys know I'm the queen of not counting very well, so more or less eight to 10. Now we're going to elongate one leg back, whichever leg you started with. And if you can, keep that long, strong length. Feel that bum activate as you lift up just a hair and lower and lift and lower. And as you cycle through this, once again, I want you to feel your thigh bones staying connected into the hip socket. I really like that cue for today. You may actually feel more heat build on your standing leg, and that is cool. That is your stabilizing leg. It's going to get some work. Let's go three more. Two. One. Pull all the way back in, and we're going to try for about ten on the other side. Do as many feels okay for you guys. Elongate. And up. And you guys will notice, if I wanted to, I could fling my leg up to the ceiling and make this a super huge movement. I am intentionally not doing that, in part because it's going to hurt my lower back, but also because in part anatomically, we just don't need to be doing that. We want the focus to be on these small, connected, stabilizing movements, a very authentic movement. Let's go to one, lower back down, come off your wrists, come to seated, take a second, shake it out. <sighs> Hopefully you guys are feeling pretty good. Nice work. So I've got a little bit of heat going in the hips now, I've got a little bit more connection that I'm feeling. So now I want to start incorporating a little bit higher up the chain. So today, we are going to try coming into a slightly elevated sideline position. Now, if your shoulders are just not there today, that's okay. Just go full sideline, get yourself a little pillow, all good and dandy. We're keeping the band around the knees. And if you're joining me here in this lovely sideline position, I want you to think about same cue that we've give, given the hips. Connect your arm bone into its shoulder socket. Now, I do not mind telling you, this is always the harder one for me. So, <laughs> we're going to give it a go. I want you guys to imagine you have like a, one of those medieval maces, like with a spiky ball underneath your waistline, and you are going to actively try to keep your waist away from the mace so you don't get stuck. Heels are going to be stacked, knees are going to be stacked. We're going to go into a very small clamshell. 
and lower down. And I've cued it this way in other videos, but again, I want you to think about this thigh bone getting deeper into the hip socket. I don't want you guys to just be flinging your body back and forth. That's kind of a, I'm not often one to use the word cheating, but that is kind of a, a more cheat version of the movement. So even if this movement starts really tiny, and you just want to think about like elongating the body. Every time I do a repetition, I just think about keeping my joints connected, but also creating a little bit of a length and a little bit of a lift. Now I know sometimes with hypermobile neck, I know I'm starting to feel my neck a little bit here. This might be the time when you come down to the mat, I'm going to see if I can challenge myself a little bit. It's not painful, it's just working. Alrighty y'all, go ahead relax for a second. I am going to come down onto my sideline position now because my neck is like, alright girl, you've done enough. We're going to keep the inner thighs active, we're going to keep the legs stacked, and you are just going to lift your heel up. now. When you do this heel lift, in an ideal world, you actually do still want to be feeling some of the outer bone. This is an internal rotation, which again, in an ideal world, should be coming from the outer bone. However, we know sometimes it can be a little tricky to connect into. So I'm just starting to really feel mine. This is another one where the hip flexor that little tidbit in the front of your hips will really try to kick on. So when I have taught this to people, sometimes I just say, even if it's a thought of movement, even if you're just thinking about lifting your foot with your bum, that's okay. That's where we are today. <sighs> Feels good. Let's go two more. And let's go one more. Bring it on down. Take a second to relax. Beautiful job. So benefit of those exercises are we get the hips, the inner thighs, that kind of whole hip socket, as well as the core and shoulder, a little bit more synergistically working together. So let's go ahead and switch on over to the other side. Again, I am going to start in this kind of upright position because neck strengthening and stabilization is something that I'm actively trying to work on. And I think it's important for me to kind of challenge this space today. It's not where you are, go side by, that's fine. All right, heels together, knees apart. Plug your shoulder into the shoulder socket. And let's go ahead, connect that hip bone, that thigh bone into the hip socket. And lower. Even if it's not that big a movement. <coughs> Excuse me. And again. And ooh, be careful that you're not sinking down into the mace of spikes underneath you. Good job, guys. Hang in there with me. Or maybe three more, but as always, you can do as many feels as feels beneficial and comfortable to you. And one more. Oh my goodness, a little bit of heat in that hip. Alrighty. Come on down. If that feels good to you, you can also stay upright for this internal rotation. Once again, knees and ankles are stacked. Hips are nice and strong and stacked. We're not wiggling through the hips. You're going to activate the inner thighs a little bit, and then you're going to start to lift the heel up and lower. This is not going to be as big a movement for me to start. And I think that's a very important point to bring up. As you cycle through these movements, the first repetition is likely not going to be your best. In fact, it's probably going to feel sticky and small, and that's okay, because that's just the way the body works. I mean, I, I think there's kind of this uh, connotation against the idea of doing a warm-up, but in essence, that's kind of what we're doing. We're priming your hips. 
We're priming the exercises so that as you flow through them, they'll start to get a little more fluid. They'll start to get maybe a little bit bigger or just more connected. But your first one does not need to be bop, bop, bop. Because right there, that was just me tossing my heel up through my knee. My hip was not connected to that movement at all. The struggle of hypermobility, am I right? All right, let's try two more here. I know I've been babbling for a bit. We'll probably have done more than the other side, but you do as many as feels good to you. And we will go ahead and press back up. Beautiful, beautiful job, guys. Take a second. We're gonna ditch the band off of our legs. Maybe walk around for a second. If you're on an elevated surface like me, just kind of shake it out. And just take stock of how you're feeling today. Beautiful. So I would like to finish off with one um, just slightly more integrated series. We're going to come back into kneeling, raising the hands and knees, and I'm just going to do this the other direction now. And now we're going to incorporate a little bit more hip stability with some upper body stability. So we've done this sequence in other classes. It's a slightly more advanced version of knee lifts and hands lifts, but all I want you to do is lift your one knee and the opposite hand a couple inches off the mat. So I'm gonna lift my right hand, my left knee, everything's just coming up a couple inches, and then lower back down. And then you're gonna switch. And lower. And switch. And if this does not feel good for you, or you feel like you're tipping over a lot, then just do one knee, put it down, and then do one hand and put it down. And that, and you can just kind of go knee to hand instead of doing everything together. I want you guys to be conscious when you're doing these uh, hand lifts that it's from a bend at the elbow. You're not hiking up your shoulder, all right? Make sure the torso and the abdominals are staying engaged. Everything is pretty much staying square and you're just creating a little lift. Ooh, hello. Let me not tip over. <laughs> Let's go four. <sighs> Three. Two. One. Come back your center. If you guys would like to join me in one or two just kind of soft cat cow movements. Mmm. Nothing too crazy. Just a little flow through the spine. Come back through center. And that is going to be the day. Beautiful, beautiful job, guys. Thank you for joining me. I hope your hypermobile bodies are feeling well. Um, I look forward to seeing you in another video very soon. But in the meantime, take care, and I will see you in the next one.